As you might remember, Lehi and his family left Jerusalem around 600 BC because it was going to be destroyed. In fact, shortly after Lehi's family left, Jerusalem was destroyed by a superpower called Babylon. Approximately 70 years later, another superpower, Persia, defeated Babylon and allowed the Jews to return to Jerusalem. During this time, a Jew named Nehemiah served in the court of a Persian king as his professional food taster, which was a position of great trust. When some of Nehemiah's friends from Jerusalem visited him, Nehemiah asked how things were going in the holy city. Unfortunately, the news was not good. Among other problems, Nehemiah learned that the wall had been broken down and the gates thereof were burned with fire. Remember that in those days, it was important to have fortifications around your city. Nehemiah used an interesting phrase to describe what happened next. He said that God put it into his heart to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. Remember that phrase, God put it into his heart. Nehemiah followed this prompting, got support from the Persian king, returned to Jerusalem, and began rebuilding the fortification wall. But it wasn't easy. First, as he started to rebuild the wall, the workers said, There is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. All the debris from the destruction of the city made it so they couldn't build. In other words, clutter prevented construction. Thus, the first order of business was to get rid of the rubbish. Think for a moment about how that might apply in our lives. Although we do not struggle to rebuild fortifications around a city, a parallel problem prevents many of us from finding peace. We have too much rubbish in our lives. This rubbish can take many forms, including having too much stuff, doing too many activities, and tons of digital distractions. All these things can be good, but they might not be the best, and they can collectively distract us from our focus on seeking Jesus. A survey of 752 Christian leaders found that 75% of them said that the busyness of their lives frequently interferes with the development of their relationship with God. When our goal is connecting with Christ, we often need decreased busyness. Although life sometimes forces busyness upon us, like urgent situations, health emergencies, and so forth, busyness is often a choice. And in the case of parenting, we may choose busyness for our children, multiplying the work to be done. My wife and I found ourselves in this situation a few years ago. We had five children attending four different schools, plus a toddler at home. Although we were trying to maximize the educational opportunities for each of our children, juggling multiple school carpools on top of piano, violin, tumbling, tennis, soccer, and other activities became unmanageable. And even if we had been able to do it all, was doing it all really the goal? Our lives often felt out of control and we needed fewer activities, not more. We were so busy with the rubbish that we found we couldn't build the wall. The same principle is true with all the things that we purchase and store, as well as social media and other digital distractions. Some of us, myself included, probably think we're spending more time on important things than we actually are. For example, I've talked with college students who think that they spend a lot of time studying, but when they carefully analyze their study time, they find that large portions of it are consumed by phone checking, social media, and surfing the internet. One young adult who audited his phone usage realized that if he kept up his same pace, by the time he was 80, he would have spent over a decade of his life on social media. I love these words from Sister Michelle D. Craig. If God speaks in a still, small voice, you and I need to draw close to Him. Just imagine what would happen if we were as intent on staying connected with heaven as we are on staying connected to Wi-Fi. All of us will benefit from President Russell M. Nelson's invitation. He said, take an inventory of how you spend your time and where you devote your energy. That will tell you where your heart is. Just as a budget helps us track our finances, a time audit can help us see where we spend our time. Recently, I accepted an invitation to track how I used the 168 hours available in a single week. Using a simple app on my phone, I was able to pinpoint how much time I spent in work meetings, teaching classes, meeting with students, exercising, family time, scripture study, serving in the church, and so forth. Tracking my time helped me realize both areas where I was doing well and where I needed to make changes. Although possessions, activities, and digital devices are not inherently bad, following Nehemiah's example of getting rid of the rubbish can give us more time to focus on what God wants us to do. That's one thing I love about Nehemiah's relationship with the Savior. He didn't get rid of the rubbish for its own sake. He got rid of it so that he could do what the Lord had put into his heart. When we have a divine purpose, it gives us strength to say no to good things so that we can say yes to the best. Nehemiah faced additional difficulties in rebuilding the wall. People from the neighboring city Samaria wanted to stop the wall from being built and devised a plan to harm Nehemiah. 
They asked Nehemiah to come and meet them. Their plan was, as the scripture says, to do him mischief. But Nehemiah refused to go. He said, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Again, we see that because Jesus put something in Nehemiah's heart, Nehemiah could not be distracted. Notice what happens next. Nehemiah says, They sent unto me four times after the sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Nehemiah resisted temptation and stayed true to his purpose, not just once or twice or three times, but on the fourth time as well. For me, the phrase, the fourth time, is a metaphor for consistently staying true to what we know we should do, not just once or twice, but metaphorically speaking, even on the fourth or 40th or 400th time. From Nehemiah, we learned that when the Lord plants something in our hearts, it changes how we see the world. It's a very real way to live with Christ in the present. Could you and I take some time to let the Lord establish the direction in our lives?